Hello everyone, it's Nancy Basting. And what you see here, I got a piece of candy in my mouth, sorry. What you see here is paper towels, baby wipes that have been mopped up, paint's been mopped, sprays on them, you name it. What we're going to make today are baby wipe slash paper towel. And I've already shown you an, a video on how to make the napkin beads. But this is what we're going to make is the beads. Now I tried, and this is my way. This is not Josie's way. This is not Danina's way. This is Nancy's way. I don't know who started this first, but I know jo Josie's the only one I've seen that has made, started making with baby wipes, okay? So Josie Gitto needs to get credit. Now, she varnishes hers after they're done, but I don't want to get to that yet. I want to show Josie and Danina and whoever else that wants to make these how you can get them longer than the original baby wipe and you can cut them in with your uh, cutter without having to use scissors and I'm going to show you how to do that okay so moving these aside and I'm going to choose a couple of baby wipes like that one now I have different brands of baby wipes in here some are thinner than others so I don't know how they do so I'm gonna get these two that are thick okay and they're similar in color now I'm gonna put all these away somewhere over the rainbow over here on this this place over there and I got a piece of copy paper okay now I think copy paper is better to use than cardstock but if you want to use 65 weight cardstock you can go ahead and do that but uh, it might be too thick is what I'm saying and when I got a fly in here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this matte gel Liquitex matte gel and I already put my brush in the water so I'm going to get a different one reach over here and get that one and I'm going to put glue all over my paper this is basically how I did my napkin um, beads when I, if you want to go watch that video, I can give you the um, link to that one. And I just painted on here pretty, pretty good, pretty thick. Get it out to the edges. This is so less time consuming than the way that by cutting one piece and and putting it on and cutting it out one piece at a time or two pieces at a time. I wanted to try it this way because I wanted to make sure that to see if my cutter would cut through it. And it does. And I have all these little bristles that are coming out of my brush, which is not, that's par for the course. Oh, I'm going to use that again. So I'm going to put my, however I want them to go, I'm going to put it on the edge as close as I can now they won't fit all the way to the edge of one side of the paper but don't worry about it and this side's going to hang over a little bit because I can't get it even 
because I don't think the baby wipes are quite even. They're not even Steven. Okay, I'm gonna glue it. We're just gonna press that down and put the other one on the same way. But you need a little bit of glue because these are gonna overlap. So you need a little more glue and you don't want to put glue on top of the baby wipe. I guess you could, but it would take forever for it to dry. I should have had one of these ready. I wasn't thinking. And so you just put it on there as best you can. Like I said, you overlap it a little bit, but that doesn't matter. And then I take my brayer and I just brayer it onto the paper. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take my heat gun to this and dry it. And I want some more glue on that because it's not sticking to itself. I know Josie was using Aileen's tacky glue, but I tried to spread it on here. And I was having a hard time with it, so I thought, well, the Liquitex might matte medium might be better I don't think you want too wet of a glue uh, for this procedure you wouldn't want your water glue or any of that now, this is just not sticking down what's the matter with you baby wipes come on Stick to each other. Okay. I'm going to pick it up gently because this paper underneath is the copy paper is really thin. And I want to wipe my table off. get all this glue off of here and then I'm gonna dry this up with my baby with my heat gun and I don't think you all need to sit and listen to my heat gun but you don't want to keep it in one place very long you want to you know move your heat gun around I don't know um, my baby wipes don't melt, but when I was putting UT on them, they started smoking. It started smoking, smoking, smoking. So, just a word of advice. All right. Here's my paper bag, and I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun, and I'll be back when it's dry. Okay, they're all nice and dry. So I'm going to trim this side off with my scissors. Just kind of give it a trim so it's sort of even. My scissors are having a hard time cutting this. And then I'm going to trim this piece off at the bottom. Don't throw it away because you can use it again. Make a short bead. Which I'm going to cut some short ones and some long ones. I don't want any more long ones because this is how fat they came out. Let me turn the auto on. That's with the long ones and that is UT'd with ultra thick embossing powder and it's hard 
you can't squeeze it. It's hard. But it's not as glossy as like Josie's were. It's not as pretty, I don't think, as her glazed ones were. It's not smooth. It's um, real rough. Uh, the uh, UT is still kind of not melted on it. And I, I dipped it about probably four or five times to get it hard. I have some sitting over here that have one coat of triple thick on them. Just, uh, how come I can't get you in the middle? Won't let me get in the middle ground. It's either all the way down or all the way up. Anyway, so it's soaking in. There, all, There's places where it's thicker than other places. I'm painting it on with a paintbrush and just letting them sit and kind of rolling them. Um, and I'm going to go back and put another coat on. And these are soft. So I don't know. Um, I don't have a thing to a thing or my bobber a uh, styrofoam to set them in so they're kind of going to one side and pulling up on one side. Okay, move those to the side over here. That's what I wanted to tell you. We can compare tomorrow after these have had a couple of coats on and dried. This is what I want to show you, okay? It's still not, it's still damp a little bit. You want to get it pretty dry so your cutter will cut it. This is also basically like the cloth beads that I saw. Um, I think it's paper bead. If you look, if you search paper bead, you'll find out her YouTube channel where she does all kinds of beads. Because she's the one that sells the bead rollers also. You can buy those from her. Alright, here's my cutter. And it's just a rotary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one end, the top end, at half an inch and angle it down. You can't see because I can't get you. Let me. So I'm going to put one end on the half inch and one end on the tip, barely on the tip. So I get an angle cut and I'm just going to cut it and it cuts right through it. And there you have your first one. Now see, I'm going to have to go back and, and either cut that off because they just didn't want to stick together. But I just wanted to show you that. And where you place your ends. And so now for the next bead, I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to put this end down here on the half inch mark. And this one on up to the point up there at an angle. And I'm going to cut that one that way. Okay, so now I'm not going to have, I have all this pretty stuff up here, which is not going to show in my bead, and I have hardly any 
paint at the bottom, anything on the bottom, but it will still be pretty. Now, I was going to cut some short ones, but now I think they're too short. But you do the same way. You put your paper on the half inch and put your point down here and you just cut. And I probably want some little ones like this. And then you angle the top or you angle the bottom on the half inch and the top on the line. And you cut. And it, you always want to make sure your material or what paper, um, napkins or uh, material or if you're doing, if you're pasting down um, uh, paper towels, kitchen roll, you always want to make sure that that's down on your cutter and you're cutting on the paper. All right, let's just do those couple and I'll show you how they're going to look. Now, when I bought my bead rollers, I bought them in a kit that was like this. And don't ask me how much they cost or anything because I don't know. And I might have the information on this piece of paper. But mine came with long ones and then you can put a, a bead on the ends so that they don't come off. If I never used that one. Here's another one. They're real little. The littler they are, the smaller the hole. The bigger they are, the bigger the hole. I tend to want to use this one. Now this one's really, really tiny, really tiny. And then I have them in different lengths. This is a, still a different size hole. And this is still a different size hole. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And then I have a long one that's about, a couple of them I think are the same. Now these two are the same. Just the end part is short. This is long. I think this is the same as one of the other ones. And then you get all these little beads that you can put on the ends to keep them on and keep them straight. If you're going to roll a million of them at a time. Let me see what this paper says where I purchased them. and I'm really shaky, guys. Really shaky. And this gives you how to use the paper beads, rollers. They're split pin paper beads. And if you go to www.paperbeadcraft.com, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Let me put autofocus on. Oh, it is on. If you can see that. I'll hold it there for a minute so you can write that down if you're interested in buying any paper beads. I mean bead 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 rollers. Okay. This show tells you how to do it, how to roll your beads and tips and tricks and I used to have a paper of how um how big these were, how many inches or something. Oh, it says here, if you have trouble keeping the sides of the 1 16th split pin straight and together, place one of the teeny pin stabilizer beads onto the end of the pin. Either before or after you put your paper strip in the slit, just take it off before you take the new bead off. Oh, that's what that's for. And they use epoxy resin. And, and I'm sure it will show you on her channel um, how they dip them. They dip them in that resin. And then they have 
uh, hangers that they hang them on, but they are like rolling like 900 beads a minute. Uh, so I'm going to use this one. I could use this one, but earlier I couldn't get the paper, the paper in the slits. So I'm going to use this one. And here we go. And I'm going to use Tombow um, Multi Liquid Glue for the end. I was using this earlier and I didn't close it off. So, but here we go. You stick it in here. You stick your end in there like that. Janina, are you watching? You stick your end in between these two slots, okay? Don't put glue on it all the way down because your glue, your hole shuts sometimes when you do that. And then you just want to pull it tight, just keep it real tight and roll till you get to the end. Just keep rolling it. Roll, roll, roll your bead gently down the craft room. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a crap shoot. <laughs> oh, did you like that song? Here is where I basically start putting the glue on. And I noticed that you need to get quite a bit on that tip. Because it doesn't want to stick sometimes to this. Oh, you fly, you're going to drive me crazy. And then when you hold it with your finger, your finger wants to stick to that material on that um, thingy on the bead roller or on, on the baby wipe. Sorry, I'm stuttering today. Okay, now you just pull it off. Gently pull it off so you don't pull the insides out. And there's your bead. There's your big fat bead, Danina. And you can cut out a whole bunch of these. It'll save you a lot of time. I'm going to show you how I UT. And we'll do another one with UT. But I'm going to roll a short one just to show you the difference. This one's really short. Oh, you always want your pretty side up when you're putting it in your bead roller. Now I can see this is not stuck down. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue and stick it to that paper. It wouldn't matter once I get it in the bead roller. But sometimes they're persnickety to get in here. I've pulled this one apart because I've made so many beads. I've kind of sprung it out. So here you go. Here we go. We can't keep it in there. You don't want to put You just want to put it in barely a little bit because you don't want that to plug up your hole. So here we go, around and around, and we get a little bead. And I like the little beads just as good as I do the big beads. And put some glue on it. Come on, Tombow glue. I know you're in there. Look how pretty they are. And just gently pull it off. It's going to be tight because you started rolling it tight. Now look, see what's happening? It's starting to unroll. Just pull your bead roller the opposite direction. If it does that and it comes out like this, just cut it off. It's not going to matter. My fingers are sticky and they want to stick to that baby wipe. I just cut it off when they do that. Just 
like that and make sure that my hole is is okay. Usually I'll use a a skewer poke in there and make sure it goes all the way through. Yep, it does. Okay, let's roll the other two and then we'll get going on the UT in them. So here's the big one. And here's the little one. And I still have glue on my glass. Okay, I'm putting it in. Do I need to bring you up closer? How about if I bring my camera down a little bit? How's that? Does that help? Okay. So here we go. We're rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. You can start, when you get the hang of it, you can really start doing them fast. Josie and I have been doing paper beads for a long time. We started back when, when they were real popular. And everybody on YouTube was doing paper beads. And then it sprung out to boho beads and sprung out to other kinds. And it just, yeah. It made a spring and started just springing. Okay, I'm going to slightly twist that. But I can see it's going to stick in there. I'm going to tightly... They say go the opposite way, but my hand is sticking to that. Just pull it off. But my hands keep sticking to the baby wipe. Because they have glue on them. Yes, they do. They have glue on them. Is that autofocus driving you guys nuts? Because I haven't been paying attention to my screen. And if you hear that noise, that's my sub pump running because it's been raining like rain. Oh, and my little bell. She got let out of the house this morning. at. She slept till 1130 and got her up. Get away, fly. Get off my camera. Got her up, took her... Put her out in the backyard. I haven't seen her since. She's gone under the shed and she won't come out. I go out there and I say, Belle, you want your dinner? You want some food? And she just barks at me. And bah, 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 bah. She knows how to get in, so she knows how to get out. It's just when she's determined enough to come out, she will come out when she wants to. But she thinks there's a critter under there, I'm sure. Because she caught a baby rabbit under there. And so she just, if anything goes under that shed, she's after it. She is totally on it. Because she's a dachshund and she's, that's what they do. They're hunting. Now, I want to show you how to do it on a skewer without a bead roller, okay? If I can do this. Now this one, you might want to use a little bit of glue, but I start and I keep it flat down on a surface and I take my finger and I just leave it and I'm doing it, holding it really tight and just keep rolling it like that. Just keep rolling it all the way down. And then I'll just kind of pick it up. Make sure you don't let loose of it. Or it'll go flying off of here. Okay. Now you're going to glue your hand. So I don't know how to get her out. Last time she was under there all night long till 4 o'clock in the morning. At least she's not yapping like crazy. Alright, so that's how you do it on a skewer. You can roll them on anything. 
anything that you can start them on, you can roll them. My hands have got that glue on them again. So she still hasn't come in. My husband doesn't have a voice. Oh, we went to the ENT for those who are interested in my progression of my husband. I will tell you what the ENT doctor said. This stems from his lung cancer. But your vocal cords are shut like this. And when you eat or talk, they open like this. Well, his one vocal cord won't move. It just stays stable. And so they're doing a CAT scan to see if um, there's a nerve on it that's causing it to do that. And if not, I don't know if they what they'll do if it's a nerve that's making it so it won't move. Um, but then they can go do like a, a, it's not an invasive surgery. So anyway, here I am pulling it off of my skewer and I'm just kind of wiggling my skewer because it's on there tight. And I don't want to pull those guts out. So when you're doing it on a skewer, you might want to start on a shorter end. But see how little that hole is? It's real tiny compared to that hole. And the bead's a lot smaller because this roller was a lot smaller around. Okay, back to my husband. So they can go in, they have to, they have to give you an anesthetic. So they call it an operation because they have to have you sleep because they go in with a needle with some kind of medicine I don't know in it and they shoot it in that vocal cord that won't the one that's won't move they shoot it in that and then it starts working again so and that's the reason he's been coughing when he eats he'll swallow and he'll start coughing terrible with food caught in there and it's because when you eat your vocal cords shut off they close to let the food down. So, or when you swallow. And his one, you know, stays stable all the time. And the other one's moving. I guess your vocal cords open when you eat or drink. They open, but his stays stable. And that's why it's causing the food to stick there and won't go down. All right, so much for my husband. Let's UT these. Let me grab my UT stuff. And I have mine in a bowl. I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to glaze the other ones, but I'm not going to glaze them on, on the camera. Because you all know how to glaze, I'm pretty sure. You just paint it on with a paintbrush. And I use triple thick. And I'll show you what triple thick is so everybody knows what it looks like. This is triple thick. Now, I don't think I have a bottle of ultra thick embossing powder because I poured it all in here because it's easier in there to do what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to put it on a big, no, on a, yeah. This is a little bead. And my hole wants to keep pushing out. Wants to keep un, undoing. Okay, I'm going to get it on there. Now, this is the, the glue that you have to have to um, put it on. And if your glue thing is dry, just put some glycerin on it and rub it in and it will, it does the same thing. That's what the frugal crafter says. So you have to get that on pretty good. You have to get it on your ends. Really good. And then, ugh, that fly is going to fly right into my mouth. 
It's driving me crazy, and it's a yucky green fly. All right, then you sprinkle your UT, which is embossing powder, ultra thick embossing powder. Sprinkle it on. I tap it off a little bit. Get my heat gun. And start heating it up. And I turn it a little bit while I'm heating it up. You don't have to turn it a lot. Just, you know, watch your embossing fluid and make sure it's all melting, your powder. Which the first coat is pretty hard. Okay, so now that it's coated with one coat, I just dip it in, tap it, and do it again. Roll it. The first coat is just kind of is soaking into the uh, baby wipe. Roll it in there again. Now it's starting to just thicken up on there. I just keep rolling it. If you don't roll it, it's going to drip. You want to make sure you get it all melted. I'm going to roll it again. It's starting to smoke. I think this is the last I'm going to do it because it's starting to smoke. And then I just twist, roll it and roll it till it isn't going to drip anymore. I don't know if I was burning my stick. Probably burning my stick is what was smoking. And that is how you UT them. Now, if you want to go back again around it and kind of get in here, or I'm thinking about putting a coat of triple thick on, on the ends of these. So... And then they dry. I mean, it's dry. It's ready to go. It's ready to use. Um, you don't have to wait for two or three days to keep putting different coats of varnish on. I mean, it has its ups and downs. And especially with these um, baby wipes. See, that wasn't dry. And I touched it. So I'm just going to go in there and remelt it again. That's one good thing with uh, UT, you can go back in and remelt it. If you want to put more on it, you can. I just put the lid on it, so I'm not going to put any more on it. But I could put more on it if I wanted to. I could even dip it in the uh, embossing stuff again tomorrow and put more on it. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Come on, camera. It would be nice if you would focus. It would really be nice. There we go. It looks cloudy now, but it's, it's really not. The camera would focus, but see, it's real kind of bumpy, kind of grainy looking. I'm sorry, I'm really shaky today. Then I'm gonna maybe, maybe I'm not. I'm gonna take it off. I was burning my skewer, guys. It's kind of hot. And when you keep touching it like that, it, I think it 
when it's still warm it doesn't get its full glossy intentions but there you go so there's that oh sorry that's the embossing way and these are the I'm going to put another coat on these and see these are really soft but this is hard. The embossing makes it really, I can't squeeze it, it's really hard. So it's, I think if you emboss them and harden them up and then put some, if you have UT, I know Josie can't get UT and she said don't send her any because it will go through customs. And she'll have to go to a different town, which is quite a ways from her to go to customs to open the package in front of them. So she said don't send any, especially if it's out of the bottle. So these are kind of dry, kind of. I can still feel they're wet a little bit. But maybe I'll try to put some UT on them. I don't know. We'll see. I'll put a couple of coats of triple thick on them, varnish, and we'll see how they look when I get them done. All right, guys, that's it on the paper bead or on the beads. I just wanted to show you how you could um, paste them or glue them onto the copy paper you got to be real careful with copy paper because it's real thin um, glue it onto that and then you can cut them all at one time you don't have to sit and cut them with your scissors so that's that if you like this video please give me these a thumbs up and leave me a comment please if you like it if if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment and I certainly will answer your, I will reply to them. And subscribe. If you haven't subscribed and you want to be a new subscriber, that would be great. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go now and do some more beads. See you later. Bye-bye.